hello, hello, everyone. We are tuning in from Take Studios, and you are watching Casually Hardcore. I am your host, Ryan Nico, and this is a show, a newfound boxing show, that really just talks to my fandom when it comes to boxing. I am a newfound boxing fan. I fell in love with the sport a year ago, but there is absolutely nothing casual about my love for this sport. Um, I want to talk to everybody involved. I want to talk to the doctors, the judges, the referees, the promoters, and most importantly, the people who bring us the entertainment, the boxers, the fighters. And I'm extremely blessed to be here with two-time Detroit Golden Glove winner, national bronze medal finalist, and just all-around budding star, Lance Boogie Smith. What's up, Lance? How are you today? Man, I'm blessed. I'm feeling really good. Good. I'm glad you blessed. I feel like you blessed. I really just witnessed you pretty much dominate your championship at the 2022 Detroit Golden Gloves. Yep. Um, how are you feeling? Are you still having a high over that win? Uh, no, I've just been really super focused. Just focused on being the best me I can be, really. Okay. Every time, every time I step out, it's like I just want to perform better for everybody that's watching. All right. That's what's up. So you think about the fans when you're boxing? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay, all right, that's good to hear because we definitely are cheering you on. So you're going to have a chance to step out in front of a larger audience um, coming up August 13th for the National Golden Gloves Championship. When is that? Yeah, I leave August 13th uh, in the morning, like 5 a.m. or something, and then the fight start August 15th. Got it, okay. And would you say that um, you definitely have something to prove. Do you feel like you have something to prove this fight since last year you took away the bronze? Um, I have my own personal goals, I'd say. Uh, I don't like to say I have something to prove because that kind of puts, like, expectation and unnecessary, like, weight on you. But I, I have expectations for myself. And high, high expectations for myself. And that and expectation? Is the goal. The goal, huh? Goal. You got to have a goal. Yeah, goal. And once you attain that goal – what how do you like are you done with that is that like is that the only goal you have set for yourself for the rest of the year or what else do you look forward to attaining this year um i'm not sure what's too scheduled what's too focused on the on on, on what's next um when i got the bronze medal it was it was kind of like a weird balance of like wow this is the best i've ever done like the, the highest competition i've ever achieved but i know i can go so much further and i wanted to do it again got so, it that's so my focus has literally just been getting back here um I'm happy and blessed for the opportunity to be here again because I gained so much experience. I learned so much for myself. And I gained so much self-confidence and belief in like, the ability that God has gifted me with. And I just want to develop it and perfect it. And, you know, right now that's been my main focus. But I just take it one step at a time, definitely. I know the, um, the qualifying tournaments is in December. Looking to do that. You know, talking about maybe going pro soon. You might see, you might talk to a manager or something after the Golden Gloves. You never know. Oh, really? That's yeah. exciting. Okay, because you're going to be 21, 21 this Friday. On, on Friday yeah. Happy early birthday. Thank I hope you. you get it in, but in a way that is, you oh, know. My celebrating going to be after the, after the tournament. After the Golden Gloves. Yeah. Okay, got it. So um, that's going to be exciting. 21 years old, potentially looking to turn pro sooner than later. Yep. Okay, so that's is, is that as we'll much as you will see what happens though. We'll see. What, it's no, it's no timetable, no stamps on, on anything. I'm sure the city is probably excited about you turning pro. Yeah. Do you think that your first show, would you want it to be in Detroit or Ooh, does it matter? I don't know. I know I have to have a show. I have to have multiple shows in Detroit. I don't know. It's, it's whatever, whatever best, you know, whatever God, God places in front of me, I'm going to take. Okay, I like Whatever the it. best case scenario is for me. Yeah. But I, it'll definitely be fun. Just like the first one, Detroit. I got to sell it out. We got to have it jam-packed. Yeah, I think you should do that. Yeah. And then do it when I'm in town, though, so of I can course, be there. <laughs> okay. You got to call me out. All right. I sure will. I will. That'll be dope. So um, you talked about, like, your experience coming up, and, like, you've had multiple experiences in your past that have helped you gain confidence. Mm -hmm. um, you just, not too long ago, came back from Ireland in yep. the – Bridging boxing, how do you, what is it? Bridges Beyond Boxing. The Bridges Beyond Boxing Tournament. Yeah. And is it correct to say you're the team captain of that team, yeah. right? I, I was I was selected team captain by my peers. Okay. Which is like a super duper accomplishment, especially like knowing where I came from, where I started. I was just like, just like you, I just gave boxing a shot. Really? Like, wow, yeah. 
So about how old would you say you were when you decided to give boxing? I was, I was 13 going on 14. Got so it. So it's been almost like seven years now. Okay. All right. Was there, what was that like epiphany that you had to say, you know what, I'm going to just walk into a boxing gym or how did you, what was that first spark or that first thought? Do you remember? All right. So I always loved sports. I love sports. Football, I was really good at football, but my team was trash and we didn't win anything. So I didn't really know how to judge my success. Basketball, I wasn't that good, but we was winning. So it was working. Um, and I went to play basketball in high school. I was going to high school. And I never really had a gauge of like where I was as a person, um, just because of the ups and downs and the success there, you know, those sports. And, you know, just got to learn how to fight, too. I knew eventually I had to bump. I've never been soft. I've never been soft. I've always just been kind of quiet, you know, just peep the, peep the scene from, you know, the back seat, kind of, you know, see what's going on. But I've never been soft. I always stand up for whatever I believe. So I just wanted to learn how to, you know, all those combinations, all those things, the self-confidence, self-belief, self-esteem, um, wanting to try something new, wanting to learn how to fight, all of that put together. My dad knew a friend, that knew Coach Ali, and here I am. Here you are today, sitting in the gym of Coach Ali, and now Tony Harrison is the owner of that gym. LJ Harrison, these are like world champions that you're working with. So you're not working with the poo puts. You're working with no. like top dog and world it. championship trainers and boxers. So how would you say that experience has been as far as like helping cater or helping to shape your boxing career? It's been, it's been, I wouldn't be who I am today without, without those guys in my corner. Um, they are, it's, it's made so much better that one is family. It's not like, oh, I'm here because it's Tony or it's the LJ. Like, I knew those guys before. I knew Tony before he won a world championship. And we were always brothers. Like, he always treated me like brothers, treated like, me like family. Within three months, like me being at the gym, they gave me, they seen how hard I was working, how dedicated I was to the sport, and they gave me key to the gym. Got so it. They, and they just opened that facility. You know what I mean? So that's the kind of love that they have for me. So I always try to reciprocate it back and, you know, just keep the relationship genuine. But it's just really, I mean, they, they're the reason I am who I am. They're a, a, a big part of that. Got it. So, yeah, you work it in the gym with them. Has helped you develop your career to now, today, you have been elected to be the team captain competing overseas in Ireland. And I know you all ended up finishing short, right? You all finished 3-4. Yes, yeah, yeah. That. But, uh, yeah. but you got a chance, right? So September 4th. You, will you be competing in the Detroit versus Ireland? I won't even be get a chance to compete. Uh, my brother got a wedding. My brother's getting married. I'm oh, be, okay. Yeah. Well, that's definitely family comes first. Yeah. Got it. So, okay, so. And I only got one brother. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, you got to be there. You got to be there for the brother's wedding. I put a lot of stuff on the side for boxing, but it's my brother. So I'm, I'm going to come through for my brother. Got it. So you talk about sacrificing for boxing. What types of things have you felt like you've sacrificed? A lot. I've sacrificed a lot. A lot of personal time, uh, a lot of time with friends. I didn't go to like no parties or nothing and really in high school for real. Um, I just, I sacrificed a lot. I sacrificed a lot. I couldn't even begin to tell you like, there's been times, best friends, funerals I sacrificed. I mm. Even times I should be mourning. I wasn't mourning and sacrificing, dedicating to my craft every day. It's, I can go on and on about what I sacrificed. So would you say that you're able to, like, pour those emotions into your career, into boxing? Do you pour that mourning into boxing? Or how do you – because you got to – you got to mourn at some point. You got to, like, yeah. get emotions out. Do you channel it through boxing? Um, well, one, it's got to be a healthy relationship because I can't just be, like, all bottled up, you know, yeah just explode at any time. Um, but like where it comes through for me, I say is um, like when I'm preparing for a fight and I get to reflect and get to, you know, you kind of have like your self talks before a fight. And it's like, you know, if every time I'm worried and it's every time I'm down, it's like, you no, know, every, I was here every day working on my craft. I didn't go to this, I gave up this, I gave up that. I, gave, I did this, I did that. And it kind of just like, okay, I got it. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Okay. I use it in a good way. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome to hear. I feel like a lot of people, especially young people, don't really know how to channel, how to channel emotions. So the fact that you know how to do that is like, 
lit to me. Yeah. Um, for sure. Is there anybody that you lean on outside of the gym for support or like um, emotional help or you know, or is it just you? Do you feel like you're alone in the world? Who 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 love you? Who? Uh, sometimes boxing is a very lonely sport. Don't get me wrong. It's a lot of five a.m. runs. It's just me. I'm waking up in the middle of the night, getting up to, but to, to say it's like all me is, would be a lie. You know, obviously God is number one in my life, my family, all my friends, my close personal friends. I got like a couple friends that I keep to. I got a lot of friends, but them couple that I just keep super close definitely help me, uh, you know, through the hard times. My father, my mom, they always show me love and, and care. And this is good to know, like, especially like with my, like my mom and like, my aunties and stuff, they weren't too fond of me boxing just because I was getting hit in the head. But it's just super cool to, like, you know, at the, I'm pretty sure like, you've seen at the Detroit Golden Gloves, like, to have yeah, all, all that them. support yeah, cheering it's, it's, for it's you. It's cool to have them there because, like, if, like, they don't really want me to box, but just because it's me, they're going to be behind me 100%. So do you feel like you've won them over, like, now that they see that you can, I definitely, like, I definitely, I definitely think I, I, I tip they, I made it a little bit more easy on them. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. So that means that he's not getting hit for yeah, real, ladies I was and gentlemen. Getting beat up there and be like, "This not for you." <laughs> like, nah, come on, come so, try school. Come yeah. Try. So look, they calling you Boog and Boogie, right? Lance Boogie Smith. Where did the Boogie come from? Tony, I, I think Tony, Tony and LJ, and Bass and them guys, I think they just called me Boogie. It okay. Boogie with the hoodie. But, oh, that's okay. How that's started, the full nickname. And then it just stuck. Okay. L Boogie, Boog. Whatever, whatever you want to call me. So that is, that's like a boxing family name. But it's like, it's like people that I don't even, wouldn't even expect to know to call me that, call me Boogie now. Okay. It's kind of cool, because I, because like, growing up, I was always looking for that. I was, I was looking for something to be like, man, I want a cool nickname. Or I want this, I want to have my own personal this, that, my own dreams and aspirations. And like, I'm blessed, like, I got a nickname, you know what I mean? Yeah, Little for stuff sure. Like that. All right, book. That's what's up. That's great. That's great to know. So, yeah, you literally like it does seem like when I witness you in your element in box in the gym, you know, you training people in the ring when you competing like you do have a lot of love. You know, it is people that like really, really embrace you. But do you think that that's because you return that same love or you give out that same love? I, def I definitely think so. I definitely think so. And I just always try to be me. I never tried to be nobody else. Like I said, at the end of the day, I get hit in the head. You can't question my heart, my toughness, or, not, or anything like that. Like, anytime I fail or had, like, a hardship, I always faced it. So, like, there's no need for me to try to, like, get outside of character and talking crazy. I wasn't raised that way. You know what I mean? I just always stay true to my morals, and I think people can really appreciate that. Very much so. Um, it does seem like it's a skill. Sometimes I feel like it's a skill to be yourself sometimes because most people, I don't know, like the it older I- It can be I, hard at times. It can yeah. be hard at times for, for, you know, just looking at the grand scheme of things, it can be hard. To be people, yourself. People can get caught up in their they own personal persona and in their own, like, fulfillment, like, I think I'm this or that. Like, I just gotta, I'm just me. Like, at the I'm just me. You just bug. Yeah, I'm just bug. I saw you at the national qualifiers do you yeah. feel like you've improved since then and will you look to go to the nationals at the end of the year yeah definitely definitely i think i i, I think i definitely improved I, I every time i step out i feel like i get better um just gaining experience learning what and what not to do uh yeah i feel like I, every time i step out i, I get better and it's just like there's more tools in the toolbox and, and, and originally for me like that's all it came down to for me is like oh that's the only thing I need that I feel like that's holding me back from like being at the top top is just the experience. Got I it. I feel like I don't I don't have no questions about my skill. I don't question my heart. I don't question my work ethic, my discipline to the sport outside the ring. It's you just you I mean? need more it's work. Just, just, the more experience I get, the better I'm gonna get. Got it. Um, are you looking to gain experience training wise outside of the city? Is there like a place that you feel like you and maybe your coaches here could go and get a different look at the work that's being done in other places around the country? Um, I think, one, going to more national tournaments and stuff like that kind of brings that out because you get to rub elbows, get, meet some guys at school, like, hey, what you like? 
you know, how you, like, preparing for a fight, what you do with that. You know, you can always learn like, little tips and tricks from anybody. Get to just build relationships. Somebody might need me in their camp. You know right. what I mean? And then I get to meet family and, you know, make family and friends all, yeah. across, all across the nation. Yeah, speaking of camps, right? So you helped Clarissa the Gwote Shields. Gwote. <laughs> Clare- the Gwote. Yeah. You helped the Gwote. You contributed to one of the top female, if not the top female boxer in the world. You contributed to her camp when she was preparing um, to fight against a Slovenian, uh, Emma Cozen, back yeah. in February. Yeah. Can you talk about that experience? What was it like sparring with the Gwote? It was, it was really good. It was really good. I gained so much more respect for her seeing it in person, you know what I mean? Because, like, you always hear about it. One, any fighter to accomplish what she accomplished is, like, maybe two fighters, you know what I'm saying? The last men's gold medalist was Andre Ward. Yeah, Shakur fell short. A lot of them guys, the great fighters fell short, even Floyd. Yeah, and Clarissa uh, Shields, she's got Roy two Jones, gold medals. She got it back-to-back. That's, <laughs> yeah. that, that's, like, and she undisputed in two weight classes, or three weight classes, or something like that. And, yep. like, she definitely deserves more recognition and respect. But um, as far as, like, because, like, she is, like, like LeBron, Venus and Serena Williams. Like, right. She's on that level of that upper echelon of, of the sport. So to be in there with her, it's like, okay, you get to see, like, okay, it's really a difference. You know what I mean? Like, just one thing I know about sparring her, like, if I can give anybody, like, a personal, like, you know, people say a lot of generic stuff. Like, oh, yeah, she was good. But, like, if I had to personally like, say one thing that was, like, different about her is her focus, i say. It's, like, no matter if I was doing good in a round and I was getting the best of her or she had a spark where she might have got the best of me or no matter what was going on, if she was tired, if she was fresh, she was locked in from beginning to end. It was no – and it's different because, like, everybody's focused. But it was just different. You know what I mean? She got a different like, kind of like, focus. no matter, like, like – I can hit her with three, four, five shots in a row. She's going to be focused and locked in. She's not going to get too high, too low. She can hit me with five shots in a row. She's not going to get – and she competing. So, like, a real true just bloodthirsty competitor who is majorly focused. Yeah. Okay, that's what's and up. And dog, too. I got a lot of respect for her. That's okay. My dog. All right, shout out to Clarissa the Gwote Shields. Shout out and good luck. You know, she's fighting, what, September 10th? September 10th. Yeah. Her and AB on the same card. And shout out to AB as well. Yeah, shout out to Alicia Baumgartner. Like, you literally are in the gym with real, real killers. Real killers. And like, you're real killers. Real killers. And you're close. I mean, you see Alicia Baumgartner more uh, often yeah. than just as often as your trainers, right? Have you all ever sparred? Have you all have you ever yeah, got to? Yeah. <laughs> I was the first person she sparred when she came to. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. So you just giving it to the ladies, huh? Getting them at work. <laughs> Helping them, funny. helping you know, them you know, win. It was funny. I had a bad experience, but um, like the first time I sparred was against a lady, and I got cooked. <laughs> it was like, it was like I was kind of in that. I don't want to hit a girl. And yeah. Then she was like, no, nah, like we're here competing, and I was, you know, I was young, nervous, and all of that type of stuff. And how how, how Coach Ali taught me is this is fighting. She a fighter. I got that type of respect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For the game, I'm not going. Oh, she's a girl. I'm gonna take it easy, but I'm. But it's just a balance. I'm not trying to, like, I know I'm still a man. You know what I mean? Like, physically, like, my body, like, even if we're the same way, I'm naturally just a little bit strong. I can, you know, put, yeah. if I push her and she push me, it's going to be a little bit different. But I just, she a fighter. And she can make me better. I can make her better. Right. right that's all it comes down to. But Alicia is very, 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 very good. She's very skilled, very sharp. Yeah. She, she's, she's her, 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 and um her, Katie Taylor. And Carissa Shields are, the, are, I think, are the best women fighters. Yeah. I'm um, definitely rooting for Alicia Baumgartner. I don't know how professional that is, but I'm an AB fan over here. So I'm hoping that she becomes unified and unifies that division September 10th. Um, you definitely going to tune in, right? Or no? I'm going to try to go. You going? Nah, I'm going to go, too. I, I, nah, I, I, I want to. I want to go. I want to go. That would be dope. I'll go. It would be awesome. I mean, because. Witness history. <sighs> Her, her, her and Chris on the same card. Insane, right? Is it on your radar to become an Olympian? Could that be a goal for you before turning pro? Or how do you look at becoming an Olympian and going that route versus going pro? Yeah. Um, like I said, I think it's just on what's, uh, what's best for me. Uh, 
uh, what's giving me the best opportunity. If the Olympics is there for me, of course I'm going to take it. And, of course, I think I'm good enough to go. I know I'm good. I don't think. I know I'm good enough to go. I know I'm good enough to compete against the best in the nation, the best of the world. The guy fought from Ireland was one of the best guys over there. He came three hours to fight me in Belfast. I didn't just fly to Belfast or just pick a guy from Belfast. They picked him to come to Belfast, and then they chose me to fight him. So, you know what I mean? I I, th- I, I know for sure I'm, I'm, I'm good enough to compete at that level. But if it's, I'm not also like, it's a balance. You know, I'm not going to waste three years if, you know, the, maybe I can't make the 24. I got to do, what, tw- 28, you know, or something like that. But I'm definitely open. If it's on the table, I'm going to eat. It's that simple. But, uh, you know, just what's, what's ever present me the best opportunity because that's all I care about is just being the best me I can be. I can dig being the best you you can be for sure. And, um, you know, I'm just excited about your journey. One, because I've seen the improvement from the 2021 Golden Gloves, even though you were a champion to now, it just seems like you won with a lot more ease. Um, And you just look, it's like it's your ring when you're in there, like you just more poised, you know what I'm saying? It's like a calmness about you that really – it just, like, looks like dominance, you know? Um, so I'm excited to follow your journey. Yeah, because, you know, it wasn't always like that, and that's something I had to work toward, you know, it just performing better. Like, one thing about boxing is, like, I've been boxing for, um, what, seven years? I sparred all the top guys, but it's different, like, when you're in the ring, obviously. I've only got, like, 30, 40 fights, so it's just, like, you get better with time. Anybody that's playing basketball for seven years, has played 30,000 games, not 30 games. You know what I mean? So I just get better with time, and I, I'm just grateful to God for that. Okay. Shout out to God. Um, And, you know, you really are a person to follow. You know, you really are somebody who is just focused, respectful, and hungry to learn and get better. How do we or where do we follow your journey? How do we stay in touch with you? Anywhere around the Detroit scene, you can find me. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at that's boogie. Um, you can find me on Twitter at that's boogie with an underscore. And yeah, just keep up with me. I'm gonna keep you guys posted on what I'm doing. Well, I thank you so much for coming in to talk to me today in my new endeavor. I love the support. I feel it. So you know, just know that I'm rooting for you. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is two-time Detroit Golden Glove winning. He is looking to take the gold coming up next week at the National Golden Glove Tournament. He's going to be fighting in the National USA Boxing Tournament at the end of the year. So please don't forget to subscribe to Lance Boogie Smith. Follow him and follow me at Ryan underscore Nico. That's R-H-Y-A-N-N-E-C-O. I'm your host of Casually Hardcore. You are tuning in to take tv and we appreciate you for watching um, gotta say shout out to god shout out to my coaches lj and bass um, shout out to my father shout out to my mother shout out to my grandmother um shout out to my whole gym family i'm missing somebody i hate doing shout outs but yeah shout out to everybody in the corner in my corner shout out to everybody that's ever had anything bad to say about me because it's motivated me to get here and i'm gonna be back with more wars and more accolades and giving god more praise and talking more crap Until next time.